All right, mate. It's me, Donna Boglin. Know what I mean? Uh, welcome to Ted Talks, the Ted Anky podcast. It's going to be class. Halloween special. <laughs> Boggling there, a, a rare addition to the Ted Hankley podcast. Um, you might remember Boggling's from the 80s. I had one, that was him. And here he is, look, it's the Butter Boggling. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't like that, lad. It's creepy, yes, man. I know, it's, uh, we've got proof of his mouth there. He still smells a bit funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lonely nights in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome, Malachu. The Halloween special, albeit it is being released a couple of days after Halloween. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Because no. it's always scary on tea side, as we all know. Well, it is, yeah, there's some night horrors. Um, I mean, we've we've battled a few ourselves. Uh, we? Yeah, I've, I've had a few. I quite take pride in yeah. them. I still you you're still wearing that silly hat. Is that going to be in your little you know, this, trademark now? No, right. I tell you what, it is Ted. Right. I've just decided that I just feel like I need an hat on because I'm incognito here, aren't I? Because last after the last podcast, right, I was down the town, as you know. Yeah. Right, and everyone was just coming up me going, Here, Mala, and giving us a bat. So, the stay, to stop lads staving my head in, I thought I'd like get a little bit like this. So, I've started wearing it. Don't Hopefully, it. when I don't wear it, people won't recognise me. That's a good point, yeah, yeah. Do you think if I stop wearing my glasses? You wouldn't be able to see, Ted. Oh, yeah, good all that bit. Um, well, good, yeah. Uh, look, I've got a new t shirt on for you today, Matters. Look at that. Walkers. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's it. It's cracking. You can get that from uh, TedAnkyTshirt.com. How do you do that? It's magic. For the listeners there of the podcast, not the viewers, I did a little hand signal there to show a graphic of the website for my T-shirt, which says book as fuck on it. Why don't you just watch the podcast online instead of listening, you lazy sods? Exactly. Well, I. Uh, yeah, good. Right, Mala. We've got a we've got a very specific topic for this week's podcast, haven't we? We have indeed. What is it? Right, we're going to talk about all the spooky stuff that goes on in Teesside. Do you know what I mean? Like, how many ghost stories did you hear about Kai or a Hall, for instance, in Rosewood and places like that? Eh? Well, I never. Well, well, I. There was this bird, right? And she used to live at Kyora Hall in Rosewood. Is that how it's pronounced? Kyora. I'll be your dog. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's what you want to know. You don't want to. strung a on the balcony. And they reckon if you saw her, she'd call you inside. And, like, you know what I mean? You'd get what, plasma. like she'd open in your arse all up and go, Hello! No, she'd, <laughs> you'd, you'd get plasma all over you. She'd, she'd wave oh. you and beckon you in. And then you'd be left with plasma. It's a bit like Slimer from Ghostbusters, but like a like a scruffy woman version. I mean, I knew the one about Pollyanna who, who used to haunt the Mandale School in Thornaby. Some kid who apparently uh, died. Really? I don't know. I've never seen it. Wasn't true. Do you remember that time when we were staying in that tent head and uh, your little dog had died and then some dog started barking and he convinced me that it was the ghost of his dead dog. It was the ghost of Dill. Ghost of Dill. Yeah, there was one. Ah. I'm sure uh, our mate's man was getting banged upstairs. <laughs> you wish we were camping in the back garden. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, hey, well, if your kids, that's a good trick to each side, you know what I mean? Get them a tent, get them outside, and then yeah. you and your lass can go at it. Yeah, yeah. Go and sleep in the garden the night. It'll be good for you. Oh, you're fucking right in there with the mum. <laughs> Yeah, so if you've got any, uh, if you are a single mum and you've got any kids you want rid of for the night, do that. <laughs> <laughs> I come now and I'll put the tent up for them, and then I'll uh, I'll erect another pole in the bedroom. <laughs> I was about to say, Ted, you're not allowed to look after kids. You know, oh, no, I look after the mums. I offer a mum thanks a mum a mum sitting service. <laughs> they sit on me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is getting rather filthy. It's very early. Yeah, if you're watching this before the nine o'clock watershed, put your headphones in. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. This week, Mala, we're going to talk. I've got. I've got a little clue. We're going to talk about a film, specifically a film, a Halloween film, or is it a Christmas film? I don't know. But we're going to talk about. Are you ready? You've got a little treat oh, for you. Oh, 
class E box. That's wicked. Yeah, that, man. Walk. Is it no? That's a, that's straight the body out of gremlins and mogwai. It's a mogwai. I like. No gremlins. Well, yeah, I like class. Talk about gremlins. A proper class, scary Halloween film, or is it the Christmas film? I don't know. We'll have that Ted, inspiration. Ted, can I just put a little bit of knowledge in your ears here? Go on then. Right, because as you know, I'm an educated man, and those that don't know, we do now. For that. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's well. Right, but Mugwai is Cantonese for devil. Did you know that? Oh, look, Ted, I've just knocked out a bit of knowledge there. I've told you, know, I'm telling you, it's class, man. Is Wicked. It? Well, I. Do you know any other Cantonese? It, well, I do know the Cantonese for, like, chicken sour when you go to the shop. Yeah. It's a chan con too. Is it? Well, I. That's me, man. You yeah, know. I know last week we established how much you look like King Young Ronan. <laughs> uh, but I didn't know you were fluent in the Cantonese. Well, I, there's some crack on Cantonese birds, man. So if you want to get the inside, you need to know what devil is. So I'd be like, hey, you cheeky little mogwai. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, shall I, shall I read the premise of the gremlins off my computer? Because there might be viewers and listeners who've never seen, a, seen the film. I mean, they're going to be not many because they'll be dialed if they've not seen it. Well, before. if they haven't seen it, what they should look forward to is that next year, or at the end of this year, they're looking at releasing Gremlins 3. Did you know that, Ted? Really? Well, I. Do you know there's a cartoon on Netflix now uh, about um, Gizmo? Is it? Yeah. Well, it's all coming together, all merging. See, yeah. we are proper on trend there, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. That's why we're talking about the film from 1984. <laughs> uh, so, all right, are you ready? I'm going to read about the Gremlins now. Yeah. Gremlins is a 1984 American comedy horror film directed by Joe Dante and written by Chris Columbus and starring Zach Galligan, Phoebe Cates, oh, Fox Axton, Polly Holiday and Francis Lee McKay. Ted, question. Hang on. With Howie Mandel providing the voice of Gizmo. I like how, is that the comedian? How we bundle, like yeah. the bald head and the little beard? I think so, yeah. That's class, that. I didn't yeah. know that. That's yeah. mint. Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, mint. He's yeah, class. A judge on American X Factor, isn't he? Class, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. I thought right. we've just done Earth something class. Educating Teesside again. Oh, oh, don't send your kids to school. Just get them to watch the Ted Talks podcast. It's mint. Right, but I'm good. Can I have a question, though, Ted? Go on, before I tell everyone. Is Christopher show. Columbus a lad who did America as well? Uh, yeah, he discovered America, and then he stuck around for another couple of centuries to discover the Kremlin. You that Doyle. It's a different Christopher Columbus. Do you reckon they're related, though? Like, it could be, like, one of his kids. Kids, kids, kids. Might be. Yeah. There you go. Remember? Well, look at that later. Right, I'm going to continue. Okay, so the story of Gremlins, it draws on legends of a folkloric mischievous creatures that cause malfunctions. Gremlins, right? And in the British Royal Air Force, go back to World War Two. That's what they used to call. Well, it is. And I can tell you where that comes from, Ted, because I'm a knowledgeable man. Are you ready? Go on, then. Right. Uh, it actually comes from the RAF around the 1920s when they first started having problems with planes after the First World War. And what they did is they, would, they used to say that anything that went wrong was a gremlin. And the actual gremlins, as in the creatures that we know of, are only Roald Dahl's, man. So Roald Dahl, who used to be in the RAF, he wrote a book about gremlins. And that was what Disney did their little gremlins thing from when they made the gremlins cartoon. It was Referenced off a Roald Dahl book. Wow. Well, I. Well, the story follows a young man who receives a strange creature as a pet, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, and then loads of other creatures spawn off it when he, when they get wet. Ted, yeah. <laughs> this sounds. No, oh, this is true, right? And then, right, if you feed them some meat right, <laughs> after uh, after midnight, they then turn into horrible little bastards as well, and that's when they cause all these problems on Christmas Eve. I think I've um, met this last, right? Because yeah. it sounds very, you know, you get wet, right? She spawns loads of, like, horrible little creatures. Yeah. And they all yeah. go mad after midnight. Look why? It, there we are, yeah. And she yeah. looks a bit like that as well. For the fucking way. Well, I lie. She's class, man. Mint. And she's a little devil. Class. Yeah, I've just read there on... Uh, on Wikipedia, where it does it does say uh, a mogwai is Cantonese for devil. Yeah, you were right, man. You got that off Wikipedia, you dialed. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, class film, right? Phoebe Cates <laughs> is the character, Kate Berenger. 
how much how much out of ten would you smash that? She is right, as you know. That proper man, I love that. I love that. She she's a ten. She's fifteen. She's fifteen in this. That you? Yeah, but I was. Nah, I I was really no, like that, even really. if she was right, yeah, podcast land. Think about this. Even if she was, I was only like what eleven. Well, I <laughs> I fell in love with her in Drop Dead Fred because you know I'm a big Rick Mail fan, and she's the girl in Drop Dead Fred. Is she? Yeah. Oh. Uh, but uh, yeah, Gremlins. I, I, I still do have a little twinge in my underpants when I watch it because I'd like her. She's class, isn't she? She works at the bank with him, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, she's mint. She's like that girl at the bank, you know, when you're at work and you've just started and there's always like one dead smart one, right? And you're thinking, oh, I'll tell you what, I'd love to be able to smash her. But then, like, one of the lads that's been working there for ages and he's got a nicer car and he, like, starts getting stuck into her and that. Oh. It always happens, doesn't it? Yeah. That would be excellent. <coughs> What? <laughs> it happened to me in Iceland. Shopping there? Well, no, shoplifting. But, like, someone else was better at shoplifting, and he ended up going off with a girl. Right. Oh. Tough. <laughs> this it was. He was quite tough. Back there, I, know. Yeah. I know why, Ted. Yeah. <laughs> I've just had a luxurious, beautiful Palmo at the warehouse, kitchen and bar in Stockton. Now, all right, they're the sponsors of the podcast, and I am doing a little bit of advertising in mid-show here, but it was proper lush, and I took a little video of it as well, so you can have a look at the, the Palmo in question right now. Editing me podcast, and having a proper class Palmo in the warehouse, kitchen and bar, up the butter. Obviously, listeners, you can just imagine a palm or <laughs> viewers will have just seen a luxury video there of my beautiful palm or at the warehouse. So you should come down, it's down Preston Palm Industry Estate, near Macro, and suck a sensation. You can have a palm or a game of five aside and go and rob a crate of lager. Or you could buy like like 27 bottles of shampoo just in the water. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Good point, that, yeah. Class. Anyway, uh, that was the advertisement in uh, the uh, the mid-roll section there. We're going to continue with Gremlins now. <laughs> right, what's your favourite bit in the movie, Mala? Right, uh, uh, I think, right, my favourite bit in the whole movie is, I think, I like it when, he, when the Gremlins mess about with that old lady's, like, chair thing. You know oh, I mean? the way she, uh, on the stair lift, when yeah, she's like, flying out the window. Yeah, and I also like that mad lad who's like, I'm going to kill gremlins all the time. And he's telling everyone about these creatures, and they're like, oh, it's only Mad Dave from down the road, because yeah. we've all got one of them, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, couldn't you go nigga? They're all after us and all of this, like a conspiracy theorist lad. I like him as well. Yeah. He's, he's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I like the bit where where they're all trying to, all trying to scuttle his mum. Uh, <laughs> and she ends up like killing loads of them. She shows one in the microwave, one in a blender, stabs one of them. It's pretty one, violent in this. Puts one down like the sink and stuff, and uh, she's like, ah, 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 sticking them in the fucking getting you up in your bastard. It's very violent. It is it's violent. Very You've got violent. It's exploding. Um, it's very disturbing if you've not seen it before. I, I quite like it when they start bullying Gizmo, do you know what I mean? It's a good bit of bullying they do, to be fair. Yeah, it's fucking, I mean, he is a bit of a wet wipe, isn't he? He's a funny man. He's honestly. absolute funny. He, he is, is, yeah. And, but this is the thing, he's their dad and mum. Because yeah. they're getting wet, don't they? Because if it starts up, if I remember rightly, right, there's that lad, isn't there, that's the inventor, and we've all had one of them, like, dads, haven't we, where he's like, oh, I'm doing a yeah, producer. Yeah, producer exactly. ashtray. What is yeah, it? Yeah. Exactly. That's a bit of a weird combination. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> the never got uh, But the ease to start up like that, doesn't he? Yeah. He's a bit of an inventor. Right, and then he's like, "Goes, oh, hey, yeah, I've got to get the kids something for Christmas," and he's got everything because the young lad's spoiled to death. Yeah. So he goes in, as we all do, this ancient like Chinese shop, and there's a fella there, and you can tell he's Chinese man because he's got like one of them beady things. Yeah, it's one of them them mustaches when that I... uh, looks like it's you know made from the tail of a horse. That's the one, yeah, horse tail. Yeah, yeah. I, and he goes in there and he's like, hey, "Yeah, what class stuff have you got for us?" And he's thinking about finger traps, and then he sees this little creature and he's like, "I'm having that." And he gets that because he's he all he hears is. <laughs> something like that. I can't remember how Mowgli's song goes. 
book, like book is on the book. I'm dyslexic. I read Mogwai. He did. He there. did. Uh, yeah, but he sings. He sings that little song, doesn't he? I'll um, if I can if I can find it, I'll play it on the podcast. And he does look pretty cute, doesn't he? Like the little thing. Yeah, when he says the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And anyway, and he's having a little wag. And anyway, he gets him and he brings him home. Uh, what's the lad called? Timmy or something? No, he's called Billy. Billy, yeah. yeah. Something like that. I used to tell people at school that he was my stepbrother. You look a bit like him. Oh. Like the kid out the karate kid as well. When you were yeah. a little kid, yeah. you looked like him, didn't you? Like Russo, and I've yeah. always looked like Mr. Miyagi and the, the man who sold him the gremlin. Yeah, they could have been related. That's, yeah, we, we won't go into any sort of stereotypical lookalikes here, about that. Have we not podcast. been cancelled yet? Not yet. No, no. no. On its way. We'll save it for when we do. <laughs> and then we'll do a comedy unleashed version. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I like it. It gets to that point. Of... Are you all right? Is well, that sorry, I'm, I'm just doing, you know, like what uh, what mums do when you're telling them a story and they're on the cup of tea. <laughs> and they sort of told you like that, they just listen. They, they, they lift the back up like that and they pop the cup of tea just in between the chests like that and they go... <laughs> <laughs> That's actually very descriptive and good. Like, he, he just told you what he was doing there for the podcast listeners, but he's also doing a very attractive face with it as well. Yeah. It's, it's quite mummy yeah. I'm hoping that these um, little um, sort of... What's the word uh, where we describe things that are happening in the podcast might entice them to actually watch it? Well, I do. Uh, and, but I don't know where we get uh, any money from, whether it's from the watchers or from the listens, or we don't get any. Or, actually, I'm going to be a fuck now. I bored d- myself talking about that. I've been getting money anyway, so I don't care. Oh, yeah? Well, I have been, you? been robbing you. You don't know what's going on. When he goes to the toilet, I'm in his pockets, sorting stuff out, rifling. I got about 80p the other day, it's class. You don't miss it, you what it? I know. There are loads of money. Yeah. So, in the <laughs> so, right, so the premise, so he goes on, doesn't he? Right, and he gets this little mogwai thing, the yeah. creature, and he brings it home, and he goes, oh, is it like a puppy or something? He goes, yeah. Now, listen, this lad that I only met a couple of, couple of hours ago, but he's Chinese, mind, so you better take him serious. Yeah, oh, he yeah, says, he says, right, don't feed him after midnight. Yeah? Yeah. Don't give him, like, don't put light on him because he doesn't like that, does he? Light. Exactly. And whatever you do, do not get him wet. Do not bum him. Do not, Will. That's hey, what it. happened if you bummed a mogwai and you, you spunked? Like, what if, what if, what if, right? Hang on. He's a dilemma, right? There's a mogwai. There's a mogwai, right? It's proper kinky, right? I mean, they're really kinky. That's gremlins, bike. too. Yeah, with the No, proper. Shut it up. Before they become a gremlin, right? You've got a proper kinky mogwai, right? And it goes to you, yeah, because I don't know whether, and I'm not being gender specific here, I don't know whether it is a boy or a girl or a they or a them, and I don't give a fuck, right? So, what what if it starts fluttering its big eyelids at you, and it's two of you, and it goes, Tweezum! Right? <laughs> and then, right? And then one of you's spunks on its back, and the other one spunks in its mouth after midnight. Do, do what type? What happens then? Does that mogwai turn into like some type of cum grizzled gremlin, but then firing off loads more spunky little mogwais? <laughs> it's, 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 it's a form of getting wet. I don't know whether the ring, the child protection agency, <laughs> the RSPCA, or the police, because that's just disturbing. But it is, it's true, though. It's an interesting so question. Someone must have thought of that before. <laughs> it's the first thing that came into my head. But, but, and that That'll was... be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, I, I think I've just probably lost a load of viewers and listeners there by um, basically bestiality in a, a mogwai. Well, it's a mis- mythical great creature, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I... It's like the smart and intelligent and super slaggy woman, mythical creatures. Yeah. Because they usually are, are like, because if you're dead, dead smart, you usually don't like, you're not gay, mass, usually, because you're like, hey, you're malay, you're stupid, get away from me. Yeah. That's usually what happens. Yeah. But anyway, back back to the movie, Ted. Yeah. So, right, 
So he brings him up, he gives him the three rules. But there's probably more rules for Gremlin. Like, if you're going to do them three, well, Bum and Hoop should be definitely one of them. But yeah, Billy, <laughs> do not be Bum and Hoop. Do, not. You do, do not. not be tapping that fucking mock line, Billy. Do, do you understand me? I know you're frustrated because that bird down the bank's giving it out to somebody else. Yeah. But you do not be doing that. You might have a little fuzzy mock line down there, anyway. oh, I bet she does. I bet she does. No, yeah, but... So, and he does that, and he goes, yeah, all right, Dad, no problem, right? And what's the first thing that he does? Right, he takes a picture. He <laughs> 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 takes a picture of it, right? Yeah. right? And the bright light does him. Oh, it's it. a Polaroid, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right? And then, what else does he do? Because the mom guy's a cheeky little devil. He's like, he, he gets him wet, doesn't he? Because he's like, knocks a big glass of water or something over yeah. him. And he like, starts going, <laughs> and he starts popping out on his face. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All the smoke coming up, and and the dog knows the crack. The dog just got. Yeah, he knows this wrong crack going on there, yeah. and he's looking like going here. You fucked up, here, Billy. I'm telling you now. He knows it. The and dog's the smartest one. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. All these little hairy little tennis balls start flying off, <laughs> off Gizmo, don't they? Well, I, and he looks all like used and abused, like he's all yeah. upset and he's dead. He's like, you know, like in the crying game when he finds out he's like, he wants to stop a little shower. He knows what's happening. And then all these other little lads could turn up, don't they? I think the lads are lasses, again, not being gender specific. If you do know the answer, don't write in because I don't give a fuck. But it could be either. So we're not being like rude about it, no. are we? No. However, I. I yeah, so they're going to get all these lads and lasses to... Someone up. will write in and go, Oh, this gender the Mogwai. They're not real! Oh, dare mogwai. you say they're not real? If I would identified as a Mogwai, you'd be a Mogwai. It's class, though. It's gender. Yeah, but, yeah, and they all pop out, right? And he knows that a couple of them lads are naughty, doesn't he? Yeah. Right? And he knows straight away, because they're his kids. And you know when you've got a naughty kid to your side, don't you? Because you see him straight away and you're like... Phew. These lads are going to be up to no trouble. And like the borough little lads they are, the first thing they do is start messing about with all Billy's toys. Yeah, and that's a like, bit mischievous, aren't they? They start giving headlocks to the dog and that. Yeah. Like proper giving it wild. Yeah. And then one of them's like, hey, yeah, I want to turn into a proper borough lad. Do you know, after he's had yeah. a couple, couple, of, couple of cheeky ones. Yeah. And he's like, hey, yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Go get us an eight ball. <laughs> well, he does that. He goes, i tell you what I'm going to do. This Billy lad, he doesn't have a clue here. We're going to play him. And we're only about three days old, but we're that clever, right? And one of them goes, hey, let's mess about with the clock. Because they know the rules. Oh, I forgot they about the, the clock. They know the rules. How do they know the rules? <laughs> and the born going, I have a, an, an yeah. extreme understanding of time and space. So I know instinctively that if I eat after 12 o'clock, I turn into one of these class gremlin lads. Is that what they do? Must be. Well, I so he goes, hey, yeah, I'm going to clock it, so he, he makes the clock wrong. Yeah. And then Billy comes up, because Billy's thick as fuck, here, to be honest, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big Then he pelts her. He's thick as mince. Yeah. So Billy turns up, and he's like, oh, yeah, lads, are you hungry? Hey, yeah, let's have some chicken. Doesn't he? Yeah. And they all get, they're all like, ah, class, it's it's past 12 o'clock, and we just all munch on the chicken, don't they? <laughs> it's like one that's my dad said that. Class. Oh, but chicken's... Oh, the dirty bastards. Exactly. Right, and then they all fuck that, and then they all go to sleep. Then they all they? turn into a big, greasy cocoon, don't they? Like, all the <laughs> They do, don't they? turn like big eggs, don't It's they? like the ones you used to leave when we lived together. You know, in the toilet, they'd be green. The unflushables. Like, <laughs> the unflushables. Yeah, yeah. So you can't get rid of them sometimes. They just stick under the rim of the toilet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they just drop out. You never did get that toy idea off the ground, did you? The unflushables. No, <laughs> the new police detective series. The unflushables! <laughs> uh, yeah, but they turn into them like, green type of pods, don't they? Well, no. They're sort of like turning from a mogwai into a gremlin. And then I remember when uh, they, they're all in the attic, aren't they? All, and and uh, somebody pops the head up. I can't remember whether it's the mum or Billy, and he sees it and all start cracking. <laughs> And then, like, a hand coming out. and I, I can't remember, but I ever think it's, a, it's his mum. And she's like, yeah. it smells. And she's like, oh, like Billy. Billy's been leaving wank socks everywhere and they've gone green. She and they start with a big, shh, try yeah. a big gripper to get rid of the wank sock. Well, I, and they turn into them things and then they open door and, and they start bullying Gizmo straight yeah. away, which is class because they're no proper tea side. They're picking on, on, I love them. Can't believe they're picking on the mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Well, yeah. 
Oh, poor kid, small. And anyway, after they've been bullying him for a bit, what's the first thing any self-respecting Teesider wants to do? Tell your mum. No, they want to go at the pub. Oh, do they, is that where they go? They go to the pub down there and they start getting on it. Is that when they swing around on yeah, the ceiling like fans and stuff? <laughs> exactly, and yeah. they go to the pub yeah. and they get on it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, someone's done a drop-off. Because then that's a crazy, that's yeah, not just a couple of yeah. pints, that. It's definitely been cut with some type of, you know, uh, whiz. Well, aye. And they go mental, don't they? And they start harassing people. But just so hang on, but so we're establishing that the gremlins do have a concept of time and they also know how to order drugs. Well, so, right, yeah. They instinctively know to go, go to the pub, which is class. Because you know what I mean? Yeah. Along with that natural instinct. I mean, I bet you one or two of them got themselves a brass as well. Well, I they did, they did, they wanted. I tell you what, they wanted Billy's missus, no. didn't they? They were like pinching her and that. Oh, yeah. oh, and she's going, oh, get off me! Ooh. Oh, wow, yeah, she's class. Yes. Oh. And anyway, and they kidnap Gizmo Dawn and fill him in. Yeah. And then all this crazy, crazy stuff's going on on the town. And then Billy's like, right, I don't know why I've got to sort this out because I seem to be the only person in this town because there must be. How many thousands of people live in that place? But there's only just him and his missus about, so they're going to have to sort everything out. And the lad, you know, the crazy lad with the shotgun and that and the, the car, yeah, who's yeah. class. Yeah, so he goes, I'm going to have to sort it out. But it, it just reminded me of your head, right? And you'll back us up here. All right. Right, and here I'm going to be sexist, so turn your ears off. Right, Billy's missus, right, she tries to put everything about her. Right, imagine this. The tower's in complete chaos. Right, and she sat there looking all sad, right? And he's like, Oh, what's up with you? What's up with you? And she goes, Do you know what she does, Ted? She goes, I don't like Christmas. Because on Christmas Eve, my dad went missing. And then three days later, he fell down the chimney. He died in the chimney dressed as Santa Claus. And like, she's like, Oh, she has to put it about her. Do you know what I mean? Turning the focus back on her instead of talking about all these gremlins and that. I'll be honest, I don't remember that bit. It happened. It happened, Ted. It happened, didn't wow. it? Wow. It's furiously trying to read. It happened, Ted. She put it on, on herself and she makes it all about her. Well, anyway, it has a nice happy ending, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. They all allowed to go for a swim. Yeah. And the electric Is that in the big toy shop, isn't it? Where they have the big battle in the toy shop. And then the leader strike falls into the uh, he runs the, the, the pond and things that. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. like he's gonna multiply loads, and then he gets electrocuted and he explodes, doesn't he? He does. And there's all green spunk everywhere. And then that that mad fella come back and he goes, "Gremlins, <laughs> I told you they were correct, Billy. I was right all along." Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a class film. <laughs> Well, that concludes the discussion on Gremlins, Valor. I found that very liberating. Disturbing apart. I enjoyed it. If there's any movies out there you would like me and Valor to discuss in detail, please drop us an email to uh, info at tedhanky.com and we'll consider it. If it's something silly like Devi Does Dallas or something like that, we've already criticised that numerous times, haven't we, from the Miss Ancian to the juxtaposition of the binary oppositions. Well, I... Um, we wanked over it, in other words. Um, hey, Mala, is there anything else you want to discuss before you skedaddle? Is that the questions for me this week? Uh, yeah. No one's brought in with any Ask Ted questions, you bastard. I sent you an audio clip in the week... Oh, we can't play that. ...of some lady... That said she chucked her dad off. <laughs> and I want to know, if you're out there, what's wrong with you people? Behave yourselves. Apparently, you might have seen it on the social media because it's trending like mad at the moment, but there was a, a hen party and a stag party from the same wedding who went out to Amsterdam, I think, well, wasn't yeah. it? And then the dad went to some strip club and the, the girl went to some, some seedy place like that and there was a glory hall and the dad popped his cock through the glory hall and the girl sucked the cock, and then they put the screen on, and she was sucking her own dad off. That's it, yeah. It's on social media, so it must be true. 
Well, anyway, Ted, right, team is all, you're going to stop the podcast now. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit horny, and that little figure of stripes just reminded me of some birds I know in Thornaby, so I'm going to get myself down there, see if I can't make a couple of gremlins, do you know what I mean? Well, well she does get wet after midnight, Ted, so I'm going to get off. <laughs> see you later, Morris. See you, Marla. See you later. Oh, Marla there. He's off to scuttle some big, scruffy wronging in Thornaby and impregnate her and... God knows what. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning into the podcast this week. Big thank you to the sponsors, the Warehouse Kitchen Bar and Grill, like I said, Crack and Palmo, and a beautiful comedy night. You should check it out. They've got a couple more nights coming up here. Sunday nights, they are moving to Friday nights next year. On Sunday, December the 3rd, we've got improvisational legend MC Hammersmith. He's, uh, you might have seen him on all the social media, over 20 million views. He basically asks the audience for a random word. He jots them all down, about 15 of them, and then he freestyle raps and makes it brilliant. He's class uh, and he's brilliant. And they're on sale now on uh, the Showcase Comedy uh, Facebook page as well. And there's also an improv show here at the warehouse on uh, Sunday, November the 12th. And there's a rather handsome bastard who takes part in that. And I recommend you do come to that as well. And you can book him for pre show food. It's proper class, so you should come. All the tickets are on Joe Pit or just at the UK Comedy Facebook or UK Comedy dot co dot UK. Simple as that. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, you know, give this a share, please. We want to get the viewers up. We, we made it into the top fifteen of the podcast charts the other week as well, so we're doing something right. We want to keep climbing the charts. So have a great week. Up the borough and believe.